Here's a question we'll be examining in this video. Is it ever possible for the exact value of this constant t of 1 to affect the asymptotic complexity of t of n? In other words, is it possible that by changing the value of t of 1, say from 1 to 5 or 10, we could potentially change the overall asymptotic complexity of t of n. Is that ever possible? To examine this question, let's note that for all the recursive algorithms we have seen and for all the recurrence equations that we have seen, we assume that we have divided the original problem which was of size n into a bunch of subproblems. Let's say, in general, we divided the original problem into k subproblems. And each of these k subproblems had sizes of n1, n2, n3, and so on till nk, n sub k. So it's possible that some of them could be identical, or all of them could be uh, identical. So, for example, when we divide the original problem into four sub-problems of half the size, this was one of the recurrences we saw. n1, n2, n3, and n4 are all equal to n by 2 and k is equal to 4. Another recurrence that we saw was something like t of n is t of n by 3 plus t of 2n by 3 plus some function of n. So here we divided the original problem into two subproblems. The first one had a size of n by 3 and the second one had a size of 2n by 3. So k is equal to 2 for this recurrence. Now, after dividing the original problem into a bunch of subproblems, k subproblems, we solved, we assume that we are solving those subproblems recursively and we are spending some extra time, say f of n, in combining or aggregating the solutions to those k subproblems. And sometimes we may be also spending extra time in dividing the original problem into these k subproblems. For example, in binary search, in order to divide the original problem into one subproblem of half the size, we had to first compare the, the value that we are searching for with the middle element of the array. And based on the result of the comparison, we would focus our search on the left half of the array or the right half of the array. So the single comparison that we do at the beginning is the the amount of work that's going into dividing the original problem into uh, into one single subproblem so that's going to get accommodated in this function f of n for binary search this function is just equal to 1 or some constant because we just need a constant amount of time to do that comparison but in general f of n includes not only the time for combining or aggregating the solutions to the subproblems as in merge sort, but it could also include the time it takes for us to divide the problem into subproblems. So, if we have a recurrence for a general uh, recursive algorithm, it would be of this form t of n is t of n1 plus t of n2 and so on till t of n sub k plus f of n. So how do we solve, how did we solve such recurrences? Well, we applied this generic recursion tree method for recurrences of this form 
and for the special case where we were dividing t of n into exactly a sub problems each of size exactly n by b we derived a theorem called master theorem to solve such recurrences and we also looked at the substitution method for solving general recurrences if we are able to come up with a good guess so if we look at a generic recursion tree for this general recurrence it would have f of n at the root f of n would have k children each with a cost of f of n1 f of n2 and so on till f of n sub k and so on and at the very bottom if the leaves of the recursion tree would have a cost of t of 1 this is when we stop opening up this tree when we hit sub problems of size 1 or in some cases it could be sub problems of size 2 or 3 or you know 1 2 and 3 maybe it's possible for us to impose a threshold and say that as soon as the sub problem size decreases below a particular threshold say uh, say 10 then we are going to stop unfolding the recursion tree there and we are going to treat that particular node as a leaf and t of 1 or t of 2 or t of 3 or t of any constant is going to be some constant and in general our recursion tree need not look like a perfect triangle we saw that for recurrences where the sizes of the sub problems are uneven the leaves will be at different heights but regardless of what the exact shape of the tree is we could write the overall value of t of n as the summation of the costs at all the internal nodes of the tree internal nodes are the nodes which have at least one child so they are the non leaf nodes and each internal node is associated with a cost of f of some number where this number indicates the size of the sub problem at that level and at that node so this would be the summation of the costs of all the internal nodes that's one of the terms which makes up t of n the other term is going to be the sum of the costs at all the leaves so if we take a relatively simplistic scenario where every single uh, path down the tree stops at t of 1 we can write the contribution of the costs of the leaves as the number of leaves multiplied by t of 1 and t of 1 is some constant and if there are multiple base cases or if the paths are stopping at sub problems of different sizes city of say uh, 1 2 3 and 4 then we'll have some terms uh, some of the leaves associated with the cost of t of 1 some other leaves associated with cost of uh, with the cost of t of 2 and so on now what happens if we vary the cost of this constant let's say we were to change the value of t of 1 from say 1 to 5 would that affect the asymptotic complexity of t of n well if you look at this expression for t of n you can see that changing the value of the uh, the base case or t of 1 is not going to affect this expression the value of this expression it's only going to affect the contribution of the leaves of the recursion tree the number of leaves in the recursion tree will also remain unchanged so the only thing that's changing is this particular value over here which is a constant value we are changing this value from one constant to another constant now is that going to change the asymptotic complexity of t of n well clearly not because if this term is remaining unchanged and the number of leaves are remaining unchanged 
then all that's happening is that this multiplier which is a constant is being changed to a different constant so the asymptotic complexity of t of n is not going to change which is why we were able to ignore the exact value of t of 1 in many of our examples but if we look at recurrences in general that is if we focus on recurrences as mathematical entities in themselves not just recurrences that correspond to the running times of actual algorithms but recurrences in general as mathematical entities it's possible for us to construct a recurrence kind of an artificial recurrence equation where the initial condition or the base case or the value of t of 1 may end up affecting the asymptotic complexity of t of n and here's one example let's say that t of n is the square of t of n by 2 how would we solve this recurrence well we can keep unfolding the recurrence if t of n is the square of t of n by 2 t of n by 2 will be the square of t of n by 4 we just substitute n by n divided by 2 on both sides here so we can write this t of n by 2 squared as t of n by 4 squared and the whole thing is squared again likewise unfolding this recursion one more time we'll get t of n by 8 raised to the power 2 times 2 times 2 unfolding it one more time we'll get t of n by 16 raised to the power 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and in general after i steps of unfolding we'll get t of n divided by 2 to the power i raised to the power 2 times 2 times 2 i times at some stage our subproblem sizes which are being halved with every unfolding will reach a value of 1 so at some stage let's say after h steps n by 2 to the power h will be equal to 1 so h is log of n to the base 2 so after h steps we will end up with t of 1 and we will have h occurrences of 2 in the power in the power term so this would be t of 1 raised to the power 2 to the power h and 2 to the power h is nothing but n so this is t of 1 raised to the power of n so if you are given this recurrence the solution to this recurrence is going to be t of n is t of 1 raised to the power n now if t of 1 is 1 if t of 1 is 1 then t of n would be 1 to the power n which would reduce to 1 so t of n here would be a constant function if we change t of 1 to 2 then t of n would be 2 to the power n which is an exponential function it's an exponential function of n If t of 1 was 3, then we would have got t of n as 3 to the power n. This would be a different exponential function. 
Now, by increasing the value of t of 1 here, from one constant to a larger constant, we are, we are going to get larger and larger exponentials from here on. And clearly, you can see that all these functions have different asymptotic complexities. This is a constant function. This is an exponential function. This is an even larger exponential. So 3 of n and 3 to the power n and 2 to the power n have very different rates of growth. Because if we take the ratio of 3 to the power n and 2 to the power n for large values of n, this ratio is going to tend to infinity as n becomes large. Because this can be written as 3 by 2 to the power n, which is 1.5 to the power n. And as n tends to infinity, this ratio is also going to tend to infinity. So even though the all of these functions from here on are going to be exponential functions, they are going to have different asymptotic growth rates. So this is an example of how a small change to the value of t of 1 from one constant to a slightly different constant could affect the asymptotic growth rate of t of n. But such recurrences won't ordinarily arise from actual algorithms because we saw that recursive algorithms will, general, will in general have recurrences of this form. And such recurrences are not going to be affected by the solutions to such recurrences are not going to be affected by changes in the value of such constants. But if we have a very artificial recurrence of this kind, from a purely mathematical perspective, it's possible for the value of t of 1 to affect the asymptotic growth rate of t of n. So this is something we need to keep in mind at least at the back of our minds, when we ignore the exact value of these small sub-problems or the base cases of the recurrence. We don't have to ordinarily worry about the values of t of 1 for real algorithms. But just as a mathematical uh, result, we may want to keep this in mind.